Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Wednesday, December the 14th, race number eight at Gulfstream Park. Let's take a look at this field. We're going a one turn mile. It's a first level allowance race with a $25,000 claiming option for three year olds and up fillies and mares. Uh, three horses in here expected to take a lot of money. Two of them from the Todd Pletcher barn, both the four of Vow, the six Liam's Kiss. They both have credentials coming in, Mike. Yeah, they do. They both have a lot of upside, too. And Avow, um, you know, even more than anything else, has recency on the other two, having just, uh, you know, run and, and won an allowance race last month. The other two coming off a pretty long layoff stand, but they both look like they have some talent. Please scan the QR code for Race of the Day access on mobile. We talked about the two Pletchers. Let's discuss the morning line favorite as we take a peek at the Timeform U.S. pace projector. That's the five send for me, who is a speedy debut winner. But that was over a year ago, and now she's going to have to go a mile off the layoff. Yeah, I mean, just a, a lot of uh, warning signs with this horse. We'll see what kind of price she winds up going off at. And if nothing else, she was really, really impressive winning her debut last November at Aqueduct. I don't know where she's been since then, um, but we'll see how she comes back because she looked like she had a lot of talent that day. You see the red bar on our Timeform U.S. pace projector in Timeform U.S. parlance. They're expecting a fast pace. That can help a horse like the one hazardous humor coming off of a claiming win at Gulfstream. First time on the dirt. Let's watch this race from hazardous humor. Look like she got a pretty decent trip from off the pace. Is going to run down a couple of tired pace setters. Got a really good trip in this race. And it's going to just sort of forge on at the end here um, and wind up prevailing. Um, it's her only dirt start to date. She did win this race. Uh, maybe that's where her future is going to lie, Dan, on this surface. But she's found a, a pretty tough spot here stepping up in class. It is a tough spot off the quarter two life stepping up into this first level allowance race. Plus, she's going to stretch out for the first time. And as you saw in the video, you know, she's not the biggest horse in the race. We'll see if she has what it takes from a physical standpoint to stretch out to a mile. The two is soul of an angel coming off of a runner up effort against a runaway winner in a similar first level allowance race at Gulfstream going a one turn mile. She's had lots of chances. She's had a lot of chances. She has hit the board in her last three dirt starts, Dan, but she didn't really come close to winning any of those races. Um, and they're not particularly fast races either. Another one who just, it just feels like she's found a really, really tough uh, field to step up in class to try to challenge here, Dan. She's got to improve a lot. If you like the number three Poema, you're going to get a better price than you have in just about any of her last five or six races. She's been the favorite in six of her last seven starts. Now, she's only won one of those races. She was a well-beaten fourth last time out, finishing behind Soul of an Angel. She has speed and could be part of this pace picture, but the pace is expected to be quick. Uh, yeah, that's. The, I think that's maybe the biggest problem with her. She's got actually got some figures that make her a contender in here. Her most recent start, where she certainly took a step back, um, she did get sort of hooked up on the pace that day, though, Dan, and it, and it feels like that could happen to her again in this race. Um, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't, you know, I didn't think she was a total throwout in here. I just thought it was a tough situation. The first of the two Pletcher trained horses is the number four of Val. Perfect from two starts, both, however, against Florida bred competition. Let's watch her most recent race. This is off the layoff at, Gulf, at uh, Gulfstream. This is off about an 11-month layoff. But Ty just found a great spot uh, for her against Florida bred one other than you see her flashing her tail a little bit. She's still a little bit green, but she's won easily in both races. She has. She was even more green in her debut, uh, Dana, at the end of her two-year-old campaign. Really, really green, getting outrun in that spot. But she came with a, a pretty good run through the stretch to prevail. Um, took a step forward, certainly, in that race that we just watched. It was off of a long layoff. Pletcher's one of the guys you don't really worry about that with. He tends to have him come back ready. And even though she was flashing her tail a little bit, I just like the way that she was running through the wire in there. To me, she looked like a horse who wants to go long. She's obviously well-connected. She's well-bred. She's by Arrogate out of a graded stakes winner on the turf piece preserver. I wonder what she beat in that last race. Four horses have already come back. None have hit the board. Best buyer of 64. She gets the class quiz. And here's the morning line favorite, the five send for me. Now, she made her career debut last November. This is a very long layoff for Jonathan Thomas, but boy, was she impressive in her debut. We're going to take a look at that race right now. She bests two next out winners. What I like best about this performance is that gray horse was the one that was pressing her early. She finishes well back. And once Trevor McCarthy asks send for me for run, you see her extend. That's what I liked about it too, Dan. Um, she did show plenty of early speed in here, but she was pretty comfortable. And then once Trevor 
asked her when they got into the stretch there. She settled it really quickly and just puts distance on these horses. Really impressive debut. Obviously, something went wrong after this. She's been gone for a very long time. She starts back not only facing some other potential uh, fast horses in here, but off of a, you know, going a mile um, off of that long layoff. It just feels like there's a lot working against her, Dan, but down the line, she just might be a lot better than these horses. That debut was at six and a half furlongs. This is a filly with a lot of size to her. I won't be surprised if she gets the mile. Now, after that debut, Thomas took her down to Gulfstream. She was going to prepare for the major three-year-old uh, stakes races early in 2022. Uh, obviously, something went wrong. She was entered at Churchill in early November. There was a trainer's scratch. So there are some concerns. She does have a good amount of ability. It seems like she's working well. Liam's Kiss is up next for Pletcher. Now, Mike mentioned that Todd does great off layoffs. Click on his name in your free form later past performances go to dirt 180 day layoffs gulfstream park the numbers are sensational liam's kiss hasn't been out since march but she showed some ability and she might return a way more mature individual agreed i just like it just felt like she was progressing with every start uh, earlier in the year dan uh, before that long layoff uh though only when the first time todd stretched her out there uh, last year, back in January, just had all the best of it that day. I mean, just like, totally loose on the lead in that race, fought off a challenger, won it clear at the end, and then she was just no match for Nostalgic in her next race. Um, we haven't seen her since then. I do think that she could take a step forward in here, but I wasn't blown away with her early on. Nostalgic did come back from that victory over Liam's Kiss to win the Grade 3 Gazelle with an 86 buyer speed figure. Freccia D'Argento is up next. She is the only four-time winner of the field. She was in against stake horses last time out at Parks, going six and a half furlongs. She showed some speed. She tired. She was a open lengths winner, two starts back of a starter allowance. Even though she is the most prolific winner of this field, it does seem like she's in against a pretty tough group. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, you know, I, I respect that she's, you know, has a knack for winning races, I guess, Dan, but she's up in class here. Um, she lacks all the upside that all of her main rivals have. And as of now, it doesn't feel like she's fast enough to win this race. Again, in your formulator, your free formulator past performances, click on the short comment. You can watch videos uh, of most of these horses. Three Witches, the eight, was a very impressive debut winner back in July, overcoming some trouble, rallying from off the pace to win. She then went to the sidelines for a little bit. I thought she ran well last time out, Mike. It was a race that didn't have a ton of pace, and she ran a solid third. I agree with all that. I, I thought she ran fine last time. When you, you know, consider the layoff, and she came back going seven, and she just did a lot of chasing in there. Um, and just really showed no quit to the end. I, I like the way that she stayed on, really, really liked her debut over the summer. I thought she did some good things that day. Um, I think this really has some potential there. She's got a nice pedigree. I think she's got a, a great running style for this race. She's got a nice outside post, and the mile's not supposed to be a problem for her. Mike mentioned the pedigree. She's by All World Stallion into mischief, and she's a half sister to one of our favorites, the long winded multiple graded stakes winner, Kid Cruz. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for all the latest DRF videos. And now we'll take a look at our top selection for our Wednesday race of the day. Mike's going with three witches, and I, I think he pretty much spelled it out beautifully. Nice outside post position, right running style in a race loaded with pace, and a ton of upside and could be the fourth choice in this spot. Yeah, exactly. It feels like she could actually be a fair price in this race, and I, I think she fits right in with these horses right now, Dan. I just didn't really want a short price on Sun for me. I do think she's a good horse. It, it, it's a, certainly a fair point. I respect your horse immensely. I have her second. I have a feeling Send For Me is pretty good. I'm going to trust Thomas off the layoff. We'll learn a lot about her. Uh, she might be the horse to beat. I'm not sure she's the horse to bet, though. That could be a relatively short price, but maybe one of the two Pletchers takes more money than expected. 8456 for Mike, 5847 for me. It's our Wednesday DRF race of the day, the eighth at Gulfstream with an approximate post time of 335 Eastern. Best of luck.